Thanks to Musicbed for sponsoring this video. Do you ever watch other wedding films and wonder how the filmmaker makes their toast look like this? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you how to do that. Welcome to the How to Film Weddings YouTube channel. My name is Nick Miller, and I am so excited to dive into toast lighting. It is something that I absolutely love, and I am excited to share with you everything that I know. Today, we're gonna be breaking down a two light and a three light setup. But before we jump into the lighting itself, I wanna touch base on a few things that you should know. So we're talking about toast lighting, and big surprise, you're gonna need some lights. We recommend having at least two, if not three or four. The biggest thing that we recommend is getting one that is by color. That means that you can change the color temperature. To see the lighting that we use, check our kit in the description below. One thing that you should consider is asking the uh, venue manager or the planner to turn the house lights down. It doesn't necessarily mean that they need to be completely off, but the darker the background, the better your subject is going to look. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to light your subjects and where to place the lights and angles and all that sort of stuff. But if the toast giver is walking around and moving, it's going to mess up your entire setup. So we recommend purchasing a mic stand. That way the toaster will stand in one spot and the lighting will look nice consistently. We always recommend being as unobtrusive as possible. So get your lights as far away as you can while they still hit your subject. Something that took me a really long time to understand was shooting into the shadow side of the face. You can see on my screen how over here it's light because my light is right here next to me and this is the shadow side. So if this were a toast, my light would be over here and I would actually have my camera be over here shooting into the shadow side of my face. When you shoot into the shadow side, it adds depth and dimension to make your image pop. Next thing I wanna to touch on is follow the 180 rule. What do I mean by the 180 rule? Is if you cut uh, the space that you are shooting in half and draw a circle around it, all of your cameras should be on the same side of the circle. A great way to help you know if you are following the 180 rule, pretend that there is a laser beam coming out of your lens. If your laser beams are crossing each other, you are following the 180 rule. If at any time those laser beams are not crossing each other, you are not following the 180 rule. Here is an example of me following the 180 rule. It looks like the couple and the speech giver are looking at each other. That's because they are. Now, if I flipped the toast giver, now they are not following the 180 rule and it looks weird on screen because they are looking in the same direction. Draw a line down the middle, put a half circle around it, and if you keep all of your cameras on one side and have the beams of the lenses cross, you're gonna follow the 180 rule. Be mindful on what's going on in the background. If I can, I avoid the DJ booth or the bandstand being right behind the toaster. I am also paying attention if like dinner service is going on, where the caterers are going to be walking around. If there is a door to the kitchen right behind my toast giver, then that is going to be a distraction. It took me a long time to realize that I could actually physically move the couple from their head table. A few things that I am considering. If a couple is on a stage, I want to move them to the same plane as the person speaking. Another thing I want to avoid is positioning the toast giver in a place that makes them have to turn their head sharply to the side or have the couple turn their head sharply to the side. So to avoid these couple of things, I will actually take the couple and maybe put them in front of the reception area or maybe over to the side of the head table somewhere different so that it is a straight on look from the toast giver to the couple. Unfortunately, there isn't a one size fits all when it comes to toast lighting. So the very first thing that I'm looking for is where I want the speech giver to stand. After I know where they are going to stand, I will then position the couple where I want them to be. After I know those two locations, then I will bring in my lights and start figuring out where I want them to be so that I can follow the 180 rule and shoot into the shadow side of the face. Whenever I started learning toast lighting, it probably took me 15-ish, maybe 20 minutes to really dial it in and get it figured out. But now that I've been doing it this way for a few years, it takes me about five minutes or so to get the toast lighting to look exactly how I want it to look. So with all that precursor stuff out of the way, now let's jump into toast lighting. Here, I am going to show you how I lit this reception space up using only two lights. The lights that I was using for this reception were the Practilite 602s. So first, let me talk about the layout. I put the speech giver on one side of the dance floor and I put the couple on the other side of the dance floor with the reception being behind the couple. The first thing I set was my key light. And all a key light is, is the main source of light that hits a subject. And in this example, I had one light that was behind and to the left of the couple 
that hit the right side of the face of the speech giver. A nice thing about this setup is it also offered a little bit of a hair light on the couple. And a hair light is, is it's just a little rim light that goes on the back of their head that gives a little separation and a little distance from what is happening behind them. For the key light for the couple, as you can see, it is on the left side of them. I put this to the right and behind the toast giver. So it offered as a key light for the couple and again, a hair or rim light for the speech giver. This is a common way to light a toast if you only have two lights. One light will be a key, for the speech giver and a hair for the couple, and the other one will be the key for the couple and a hair for the speech giver. As you can see, we followed the 180 rule. We drew a line right down the middle of the dance floor and put a circle around at the bottom and our cameras were on the bottom side shooting into the lights. If there were lasers coming out of our lenses, they would definitely cross. By having our cameras be on the opposite side of the lights, this allowed us to easily shoot into the shadow side of the face. If you only have two lights, this would be my go-to setup for every single wedding. I wanna take a quick break and talk about the sponsors of this video, Musicbed. With over 1,000 curated bands, artists, and composers, Musicbed is the exclusive licensing platform John and I use for our wedding films. Choose from over 40,000 songs from incredible artists like Secret Nation, Penny and Sparrow, and Tony Anderson. The website and app have been created with the wedding filmmaker in mind. Find the perfect song every time with the robust search features like genre, mood, and my favorite, key. Don't know exactly what you're looking for? Check out Musicbed's curated playlists like cinematic vocals, singer-songwriter, or one of my go-to's indie folk. Still can't find what you're looking for? Reach out to the Musicbed staff for their complimentary song search. Take your projects and wedding films to the next level with Musicbed. Sign up for a free account and hear the difference yourself. Use promo code HTFW22 for one month off an annual subscription. Your journey to the best music for your wedding films is one click away with Musicbed. Now I want to jump into a three light setup that I used at a recent wedding. Again, we used three Practilite 602s for this reception. I placed the toast giver in the middle of the dance floor and I pulled the couple from their head table, which was at the clear end of the reception space onto the edge of the dance floor with the audience behind them. I know I earlier said that I don't like to shoot with the band stage behind the toast giver. However, in this space, there wasn't much of an option and I knew that I could light them really well in that spot and so I decided to light them well rather than worry about exactly what was behind them in the background because I knew that I could still make it look really good. For the key light to the toast giver, I had this light behind the couple to the right. So it lit the subject up really, really well, but it also gave us a little bit of a hair light on the couple. I then had another Practilite as my key light that was to the left of the toast giver that was filling in the couple very, very nicely. I then added my third Practilite as the hair light for the toast giver. If you're using a third light on the toast giver, be mindful of where that light is coming from and that it is not interrupting too much into the shadow side of the face. If you have it too close or too far around the side of the face, it can really wipe out that shadow. So make sure you're shooting across and maybe turn the intensity of that light down a little bit so that you still get that nice shadow side of the face. Again, we followed the 180 rule with a line right down the middle of the dance floor. We were to the right of the speech giver, to the left of the couple on 70 to 200s tight, shooting into the shadow side of the face. Now, when you have that third light for the hair light, it might be on the same side as your camera and that's okay. Whenever we're talking about shooting into the shadow side of the face, we are primarily talking about the key light, okay, that fills in most of the face, this, this side over here, and you want your camera to be on the opposite side of the key light. If you only have three lights, this is a great setup for you. You have the key light on the speech giver, which acts as a hair light on the couple. Then you have a key light on the couple, and then you have a dedicated hair light on the speech giver. So what are you doing when it comes to toast? Are you applying any of these techniques? Are you applying any of these tricks? Where is it that you struggle when it comes to toast lighting? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this information helpful and you'd like to dig in deeper on becoming a wedding videographer, we highly recommend checking out the complete wedding videography course, which you can do right over here. As we drop this video, our course comes out next week. Click on this link and download a free section. If you're watching this in the future, click that link below and you can get on the wait list and be notified when we launch the course again. Thanks again to Musicbed for sponsoring this video. And until next time, we will see ya.